Hi, this is Anthony with part three of The Queens of Dreams or Mount Vesuvius from my novel All a Heart Can Hold. In the published novel, you're going to get features like photographs. These are, uh, this is Nunziato Esposito, and that's my great grandfather Fiore. So they married. So this next part is about Nunziata. <clears throat> 100 miles to the northwest, Nunziata's wedding had escaped the freak rainstorm. Strong winds had blown all of the storm south. It was as Nunziata had intended it to be. Perfect day in June for her wedding. As soon as she saw the clouds gathering over the horizon the night before, she used all her might to push them back further and further until she had a gentle horribly terrible headache from it. Her new husband, Giuseppe, was not a gentle lover and their love making hurt and it actually made her angry. And she found herself with a child. Um, they fought about everything. They didn't listen when people told them to stop. Bust, the bust, to stop. Enough. And on a perfect day, she was also she also noticed her family and the Furies straining at being with one another. The Espositas were quiet people, not the Furies. They were loud. Well, not here, not now. She thought, and she thought real hard, as hard as if not harder than she thought about the storm clouds. People clammed up. But there was a cloud of tension that hung over everything. Like draped funeral curtains. Nunziata didn't care. Good, she thought. They weren't fighting, and it's all that mattered. Nine months later, almost to the day, Rosario's baby was born. But there was big trouble. The baby couldn't breathe right. He was dying. Baptize him now, she screamed. I don't want him going to limbo. As baby Lorenzo breathed his last... He sprouted wings and flew to heaven. Just in the nick of time, they got him baptized, and he entered paradise with his first and last breath, or so Rosario imagined. Now back to Nunziata. Baby Nicholas had a little more luck. Nunziata was hemorrhaging as he came out of her. Nothing could possibly hurt this much. She felt like she had just been split in half by an axe. Then she passed out and was floating in a place full of clouds. A woman with intense eyes approaching her smiling, she offered her a sword. She woke in a feverish, feverish sweat. The baby was fine. Nunziata was alive. She never to do what she had but she she never wanted to do what had caused this to happen to her ever again. I don't think my grandfather my grandfather agreed with that otherwise I wouldn't be here. The fields gave life and the fields gave death. It never matters to the fields. It only matters to us. The women give birth and some of the births ends in deaths. For the babies and often for the women as well. This too did not seem to bother God. It only mattered to us. Rosie was pondering what her brother Dominic had said to her after her baby had died. Dominic was a real smart boy. He practically taught himself how to read and he could spend hours talking to Father Fenucci. Father Fenucci had quite a collection of books, and Dominic was welcome to read them. Father Fenucci thought that Dominic should become a priest. But what Dominic really wanted to be was a doctor, a man of science and philosophy. When Dominic had discovered the library in Foggio, which was the capital of the province, <clears throat> he thought he had found heaven. It was a very long trip there, but he tried to get there as much as he could. Lately, all Dominic thought about and spoke about was going to America. So many others had made the move there. Word came back slowly via occasional letters, and the news always seemed too fantastic to even believe. Jobs, schools, businesses, people even owned their own houses there. It had been almost five years since Philip, Rosario's older brother, had gone there. <clears throat> he had found a wife there and had his own business and house. Every time he wrote, he begged them to consider coming. All this talk about America had Rosie a little excited and a little scared. She could not even imagine what it would be like to leave Mama, let alone Rosetta Valfatore. The furthest away she had ever traveled was to Foggio once. 
Dominic had gotten his hands on an English book and was trying to teach himself to speak English. It sounded like a really funny language. The words didn't seem like words, and they sounded as hard as rocks, crunching on your teeth, not soft and beautiful like Italian. And I'll continue with part four in my next reading. Thanks for listening.